Let's chat about Manx blocks. Hi there, welcome to a new video on the Shibiru channel. My name is Irene and today we're going to chat about Manx blocks. A super fun block that you can sew by hand that is originally from the Isle of Man and uh, in this video we're going to discuss how to make a block, where to find more information about the background, uh, what materials you need and the layout options uh, for when we have a whole bunch of blocks. So here I have my Manx block box and of course my pile of blocks that I've already finished. I started this project because I wanted to have a hand stitching, hand sewing project and I didn't want to do English paper piecing. I wasn't really drawn to those cardboard pieces and the tiny stitching. Um, so then I came across this technique and this is all done by hand and the background um, of this block of this technique is actually really interesting. So I learned about the technique and about this block by the blog Diary of a Quilter. I will put the link in the description down below so you can hop over to those two blog posts. One is more about the history about the Isle of Man and the Manx blocks and the second one explains the uh, technique in a photo, tut photo tutorial. That is the one that I followed to learn how to do this. I will show you in this video how I do uh, the sewing. So in the video I will show you but um, I really encourage you to hop over to the blog and to uh, read it and uh, do the photo tutorial if you want to make your make these blocks yourself. So yeah, that was why I started making these because I wanted to do some hand sewing and I'm really happy that I started because now I can't stop. It is just such a fun thing to do. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what you need uh, to make these. Well, obviously you need fabric and the fabric that I packed picked for this is the fabric that I also use in my book Should We Do Happy Notes and that is just a whole bunch of happy colored fabric. Let me get that out of my box. So I've already cut into it um, but this pile gives you an idea. So I have a whole bunch of colored fabrics these are available as a bundle in my shop. Um, so I use these in combination with low volume fabrics. And these are all already cut into strips. Um, yeah, low volume fabrics in gray and whites. And these I combine into the blocks. So every block has a color aspect and a low volume aspect. And that creates these fun uh, blocks. So that's the fabric that I use. And then besides that, um, scissors. So originally um, the pieces of fabric were torn. Um, so you did not use a rotary cutter, ruler or scissor or anything. Um, but I do use that. So for measurements, Everything starts with a squared block and the idea is that you measure this block, so the size of your quilt blocks, you measure it by the span of your hand. Um, I kind of measured that and it was about seven and a half inch and I, uh, well I took that but instead of measuring it each time with my hand I just use a ruler and rotary cutter to cut all my starting squares to seven and a half inch. That is the back of your block. So that is what you see here. Those are, these are those, those are these. So that's going to be the back of the quilt. Um, and then there are two more measurements that originally were um, taken from your hand. So you have that center square that you start with and that is measured as the inside of your middle finger. For me that was three inches 
um, yeah, you can measure that, but also I just measured that once and then um, use a ru ruler and rotary cutter now to cut all these inside squares. And then the final thing you need is strips. And those strips are measured by from the joint of your thumb to the edge of your uh, nail. And that was around two inch for me, so I rounded it up to two inches. And that's the width of the strips that you're going to need. So, yeah, I think originally that meant that each quilt was very personal to the quilter who would made it. When you would have super small hands, your quilt blocks would turn out a little bit different than when you would have super large hands, which I think is a very funny, funny fact. Um, so yeah, when you start making something like this, you decide on the sizes for your big square, middle square and your strips. So that is fabric wise. Then the next thing I use is a nice thick um, hand quilting thread. So I use Silky, Silky Petite's 12 weight um, and that is the thread that you use to sew it all together. And I use a thick thread because here I did not do that. Here I use a simple plain white thread. But when you use, here we have one, a thicker hand quilting thread, then it really shows on the back. And I think that makes it extra fun. So there you see all the stitches on the back of the block as well. So this will also be the back of the quilt. So then you already have that quilted detail there. So that's why I use a thicker, uh, fun color thread, um, all kinds of colors and to stitch some needles um, just needles that you prefer and these are bohin needles um, applique needles they're just really thin and go through the layers of fabric really nicely a thimble and um, some pins you don't really need pins but it does make it a little bit easier and um, neat. This block is not about being very precise and neat but using pins still comes in um, comes in handy and scissors to uh, trim the strips. Yeah so those are things you need to make a Manx block. So shall we make a Manx block together? Let's go! To summarize all the materials we need a block for the back. We need a center block, we need strips, we have colored strips, low volume strips, um, scissors, thread, needles, uh, pins and a thimble and then we're good to go. So let's start with preparing our block. You put your fabric with the right side down and fold it in half two times so that you will have a nice cross on the fabric and this is just to place your center square in the center there we go in the center put a pin in there so it stays there um, and then you're ready to fold and this folding is to make some markings and you want to have three marking lines on each side so you will fold it once and twice and fold it towards the center square. That is the preparation you need and after that we can start sewing some strips. There we go. Okay, all the lines are in there. So now I start with two strips in low volume fabric. First strip just cut it off and I will place it here and then you sew it on a quarter inch from the edge. There we go. So I started with a little knot just on the front and then you want to finish with your needle at the back of the block. 
and this doesn't need to be too precise how far away you are from the edge that doesn't really matter because now you're going to fold the fabric you're going to fold until the first marking line that you made you can now put a pin in here so that it stays nice and flat then it's time for the second so the second piece that you're going to put on there is going to go over here and that is always on the side where you ended with your fabric so this is the side where I started uh, with a thread sorry where you end with your thread that is the size that a side that you will continue with your fabric so this was the side that I started so I'm not going to put it here but I'm going to put it here and there we go let's put a pin there and then you will just bring up your needle where you left off and then you sew all the way to the other side so you will leave a um, little piece open here and then you just continue sewing to the other corner and again the same thing you will just put your needle here and finish at the other side so now we have stitch from here to here to there and after each strip you add you will fold it open and turn and then it's time for the first colored strip and for all the yellow centers I am using turquoise or teal strips so I have that as kind of a color scheme in my um, in my quilt so here are my th teal blocks and as you can see they all have a yellow orange is center So yeah, those basically are the steps to making a Manx block. And you just need to repeat them over and over again until you have made all the strips towards the outside. So as you can see here, the strips will be nice and, well, how do you say that? It's playful. They are um, uh, yeah, folded, so they have extra fabric here that stays loose on the front and that gives it an extra 3d element and then on the back you can see that it's all nicely secured all the way to the outside up until you add your final strip and then your block is done these blocks are perfect to do as late night sewing where you don't have the best lighting or you're not in the mood for a very precise project um, yeah, you can just make these blocks and don't worry too much about precision and they will still turn out beautiful. Whenever you get to the end of your thread, um, you can just tie it off at the front because you will always fold this to the back. So I will just make a few stitches on the spot, small knot. knot clip it off there we go um, yeah and then you have secured your thread fold it open and there we have the first few first <laughs> first four sides done um, yeah that's the basics of the block and then you will continue in this case with the low volume fabrics and make your way around and around until it's done so then when you finish your block, it's time to make a whole bunch of blocks. Of course, depending on the size of the projects that you want to make, you just need a few to make a pillow or you need many to make a quilt. I want to make a quilt, so I will need many blocks. And then the fun thing is that you can think about the layout of the quilt. 
and these blocks they are uh, like the log cabin blocks when you want to design something with them you can see them as half square triangles so I have a triangle in color and a triangle in low volume so you can you can use that to make shapes and uh, figures with those so let's put a few options on the design wall so you can see what I mean So here I have played with the triangular shape that you get when you place two blocks together. So you have the negative triangle and then the color triangle. I think it's a really bold quilt because you mix all the colors together. You can also group them together in shapes and that will give a more easy on the eye pattern. And even though I don't have enough blocks yet to complete this whole design, you already see that there's more um, well, peace and quiet, more, it's, it's easier on the eye, it's um, more organized, more structured, even though there is a lot of color because they're grouped together in lines, um, it's less chaotic. So this is also an option. And there we have another option. Um, here the color groups are a little bit bigger than the first design that I showed. And so there we had only the color triangles and now I made like kind of the color blobs. And this also is a kind of a traditional feel. The block in itself is already pretty traditional since it's a um, log cabin kind of block. So uh, this is not really the look that I want to go for with my quilt. I want the overall design to have something um, something more modern, a uh, more modern feel to it. And I have a few ideas in mind for that. Let me show you. When you have EQ8, so Electric Quilt 8 or 7 or um, some kind of quilting program like that, you can just go in and play with half square triangle blocks. So let me find some blocks. I already put them in in the color that I have. So you have green blocks. And this is kind of the design that I just put on my design wall. So where you have four blocks grouped together. And this is a really quick and easy way um, to play around with those blocks. To see what kind of um layouts you can make see the shapes forming that i just had on my design wall um yeah so this is a fun thing that such a quilt computer program can do for you of course you can also do this in illustrator or uh, another design program that you are familiar with um yeah so endless possibilities you can go for uh, a nice chevron for example how do we make a chevron well we put in some blocks and then we rotate them to this so here you create a chevron this is also a fun one I guess to um, uh, to use in a quilt but still it's not completely the look I want to go for. Oh well, that is fun, but it's not what I had in mind. And I already designed something. So here's one thing that I did. Um, so I put in the blocks and then, well, I did the, started with those vertical, no diagonal lines, but I made them longer and I, well, played around with it a little bit to uh, create some alternative shapes. So I think this one is fun, but I took it a little bit further. And um, you mixed in some squares. So here you see the pink squares and the hourglass shapes with the yellow and then some random uh, rotated blocks. Um, and this 
probably is going to be quite chaotic because of all those colors. Um, so I like it, it's fun, but maybe on my quilt with my fabrics it was too, too chaotic. So then I came to this one and I think this is going to be my quilt. So here we do have those uh, lines um, and a few just flying flying triangles. I have less of the yellow and the pink in here um, and more of the teal blue green color group. And I think that will also tone down the quilt a little bit. So um, these colors are the cooler, cooler ones from the same color group. And uh, then we just have an accent of yellow and pink over here. So I think this will, this will really look fun. So let's put this on the design wall. I have a lot more blocks to make, but I already really like where this is going. So it's not too chaotic. There is some structure, some color um, blocks, groups in here, but still a really fun, um, fun modern shape. So I'm really curious how this is going to look when I add more blocks. So my plan for now is to add more blocks uh, of each color group so that I still have roughly uh, the same amount of blocks for each color group so that I have my options open and then, um, then play around with it a little bit more. So probably work on it until I have half of all the blocks for that potential quilt design done and then uh, make my final decision of what it's going to be. But I really like where this is going. I'm super curious, would you um, have in mind for designs? If you have fun things popping up when you see this, uh, what would you do with it? What kind of shapes have I not thought of that uh, you do see for this quilt? Let me know that I can play around with that. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for tuning in and um, uh, and following along with this uh, short Manx instruction and layout demonstration. So that's the update of my Manx blog project. I hope you do give it a try because those are so fun to make. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye!